Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag Sports and welcome to week two of Razor Sharp Picks. I know you're thinking, Razor Sharp Picks, did you see what happened week one? Week one wasn't a great week for me, I'll admit it, but we're moving on and hopefully moving on up as we continue with our week two picks. It's going to be a long season, so if I'm going to let one bad week stop me from doing this, well then... I might as well stop doing this a couple years back, okay? But join me as we continue, and here we go with our Razor Sharp Picks for Week 2. What stupid thing do we do this time? Hello, fellow Bills fans. Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun, utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! Before we get into those picks, however, guys, I want to remind everyone, just like we did week one, going to remind you again in week two, hashtag sports teaming up with sports betting app mybookie.ag. That's mybookie, M Y B O O K I E dot ag, A G. Make sure you go there and use the promo code HTS. If you use the promo code HTS, MyBookie.ag will give you $1,000 on your first deposit free or up to $1,000 of your first deposit free. They will match you up to $1,000. That's free bets. Let me make sure I explain this the right way. So go to MyBookie.ag, put in up to $1,000, and they will match you dollar for dollar to get yourself some extra bets and maybe try to make up for any bets that you may have placed because you listened to me in week one so let's talk about week one briefly i want to move on from week one as fast as i can against the spread last week i was 5 10 and 1. pretty bad okay i'm not gonna lie pretty bad people like me are why vegas makes money straight up not much better seven and nine so we're looking to not only get on the uh above 500 side of things we're also trying to get some double digit wins we'll have some weeks with some double digit wins instead of these double digit losses let's get that taste out of our mouth and let's move on to those week two razor sharp picks all right guys so we're moving on to week two and it starts with thursday night football and thursday we're going to be in the nation's capital washington as the washington football team with all their sewage problems going to play the new york football giants talk about problems right the giants look bad against denver washington football team didn't look great, but you know what? No Ryan Fitzpatrick now either. You got to move on to that backup quarterback. You still have that, that great defense over there in Washington. Washington, a three and a half point favorite in this one. And, and to me, that's there's no reason for that. This is a divisional matchup, short week right now. Normally on a short week, I favor the home team, and it's no different here. Give me the Washington football team to win this game. But give me the Giants to cover a three and a half point spread, maybe a field goal type game. Saquon Barkley uh, and the Giants offense trying to take, play keep away, long, longer drives. Washington football team can't trust their offense to score. So give me the Washington football team to win this game. Give me the Giants to cover that three and a half point spread. Then we move on to Sunday. We move on to our team, the Buffalo Bills. This is a very disappointing last week, week one, losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Bills 0-1. For the Dolphins, they're on cloud nine, the only team in the AFC East currently 1-0. And now they have their home opener against division rival Buffalo. Buffalo comes in as three and a half point favorites on the road. I like the Bills in this one. I like the Bills to get back on track. Give me the Buffalo Bills to win this game. Give me the Buffalo Bills to cover that spread. And again, guys, doing weekly videos, weekly pick them videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to hashtag sports. Like this video. And again, in the comment section, give me your picks, whether it be straight up or against the spread. I want to know what you think. So give me your picks in the comment section. Moving on, we got the Broncos at the Jaguars. The Jaguars, six point underdogs as they're at home. This is going to be the second game played in Jacksonville. Remember last week, the New Orleans Saints called their home Jacksonville after they were uh, they were misplaced because of the hurricane. So hopefully everyone's okay uh, because of the hurricane, wishing everyone uh, safety as they try to rebuild now after that hurricane. But now the Jacksonville Jaguars get to have their home opener 
in Jacksonville. Again, six point underdogs as the Broncos come to town. Broncos want to know after really uh, doing a great job against the Giants, played a great game. Uh, if, you ever, if you didn't see that one, I thought it was really well played by the Denver Broncos. All three phases of the game, okay? They really didn't let the Giants get much going. I like the Broncos in this game. Give me the Broncos to win this game. And give me the Broncos to cover. What's well, a pretty big spread, but this week it's not even close to the biggest spread. Give me the Broncos to win the game. Give me the Broncos to cover a six-point spread. Moving on to probably the biggest spread of the week and maybe the biggest spread of the season, although this team is going to be giving up a lot of points all season long, or be getting a lot of points, I should say, all season long. The Houston Texans are on the road, and the Houston Texans surprise some people with a pretty good win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Texans come into Cleveland playing the Cleveland Browns. They are 12-and-a-half-point underdogs. The Browns looked pretty good on offense against the Kansas City Chiefs, but that Chiefs offense has a very good way of making a lot of defenses look bad, and that's what happened to the Browns. Browns, again, 12-and-a-half-point favorites at home, home opener. The Browns very excited, right, because – they almost got a win. They almost got a win against the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. But you got to think they put a lot into that game, right? And now they're coming off of that tough loss. Houston's coming into town, a home opener. So you have to be a little amped for that. Give me the Cleveland Browns to win this game. Baker Mayfield, they get on track, right? But give me the Texans. It's a really big spread for NFL spread standards. 12 and a half points. That's huge. Give me the Browns to win this game. Give me the Texans to cover a 12 and a half point spread. Moving to Chicago. Chicago, the Windy City, the Chicago Bears, three-point favorites going against the Cincinnati Bengals. Listen to me. The Cincinnati Bengals showed me a little something with their overtime win against the Minnesota Vikings. The Bears, uh, unfortunately, losing against the Rams on Sunday night football. So they're 0-1. The Bears still with questions at quarterback. I think they're still sticking with Andy Dalton here. I don't know how much longer they're going to do that, but they're doing that for at least one more week or at least for the start of one more game. You got the Cincinnati Bengals. Hey, I, I like this offense. I think this offense played very well last week. And I think they can keep things rolling. You know, they played well last week and the Minnesota Vikings team has a really good defense. on now a lot of new names in Minnesota, so they have to get that uh, that that camaraderie and everything flowing, get together, right? But the Bengals still look pretty good. You have to like what the Bengals did against that Minnesota Vikings defense. Give me the Bengals to win this game. Give the Bengals to beat the spread as they're underdogs in this one in Chicago. They move on to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And listen, the Eagles love the fact that they are 1-0 and after beating the Atlanta Falcons pretty badly last week. St. Fran coming into town. The 49ers winning last week against Detroit, but getting a few injuries along the way. So St. Fran and injuries seem to be a common tread, trend over the last two years, an unfortunate trend if you're a 49ers fan. But the, the 49ers still have a really great team, okay? And you look at the NFC West, they can't afford to lose many games against teams they are expected to beat. So I know they're going into Philly. I know it's West Coast traveling East, so you always want to be a little bit weary of that. However, I like the 49ers in this game. They have 49ers to win this game. They have 49ers to cover a three-and-a-half-point spread. Going to Carolina, you got the Carolina Panthers at home against the New Orleans Saints. Guys, the Saints put a shellacking on the Green Bay Packers opening weekend. It just didn't even look like Aaron Rodgers wanted to be there at times uh, as he just looked abysmal. Carolina, uh, Christian McCaffrey looking pretty good against the Jets. It took him a little bit to score in that game, right? But then they come out, they win by five points. Not too exciting, but nothing that wasn't expected either, right? They did the job. They did what they had to do. The Panthers come away with the win against the New York Jets. So now the Panthers go up against the Saints. And listen, I know the Saints looked really good against Green Bay, and Green Bay looked really bad. But to me, I chalked that up as a preseason game. Now, the Saints won the game. You have to give for what they did. But you have a team in Green Bay that came out that really looked like they didn't want to be there, honestly. And so I think about a game like that against the, the Packers, and how much does that really get you ready for a physical, a tough divisional battle? I really don't think it does. The Jets, on the other hand, again, the Panthers barely beat the Jets. It was a tough game, especially in the first half. The Jets tried to come back late in that one. I think the talent level is not where it should be for the Carolina Panthers to match up against the Saints. But I think three and a half points, a lot of points to, to give up on at home against a team that I just don't know how prepared they're going to be coming into this game. Give me the Saints to win this game. 
So give me the Panthers to cover a three and a half point spread. Then we go to Indianapolis where the Colts are at home playing against the Rams. The Rams four point favorites in this game. The Rams looked really good on Sunday night against the Chicago Bears. I expect the Rams to continue to just keep on moving forward. I think Matthew Stafford looked good in that in that game. You know, you got a couple good wide receivers for the Rams as well. You look at the other side of the ball, the Colts. The Colts just need to get something going, right? Week one just wasn't their week. Can they get going? Carson Wentz but didn't look terrible in week one, but he didn't really wow us either against the Seattle Seahawks. So I like the Rams in this game, the Rams to win this game, the Rams to cover a four-point spread on the road. Moving on to a battle of two 1-0 teams. I'm really surprised I'm saying that. Talking about these two teams, the Raiders with a comeback on Monday Night Football against the Baltimore Ravens. 1-0 going into Pittsburgh Playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Steelers, five and a half point favorites in this game. The Steelers defense looked really good against the Buffalo Bills. So we have to give them credit, have to give credit where credit is due. The Raiders showed some resolve on Monday night, beating a team that really, even though they have all this in, those injuries, really were the better team on paper, in my opinion. So you look at the Raiders team, they're going to be coming out looking strong, but it's a short week. So you do have to take that into consideration, and it is a West Coast team coming East, okay? So those are all things you have to take into consideration, especially on that short week. You have the Steelers, five and a half point favorites, again, coming off that very big win, a game that most people, if not all people, thought they were going to lose, going to Buffalo for the home opener there. First game in Pittsburgh of the season. Given the Steelers to win this game, five and a half points, I don't know if they have the offensive firepower uh, to score a lot of points in this game. I like the Raiders' offense more than like the Steelers' offense. The problem is I like the Steelers' defense a lot more than I like the Raiders' defense. So give me the Steelers to win this game. Give me the Raiders to cover a five and a half point spread. Another five and a half point spread as we go to New Jersey as the Jets play home opener against the New England Patriots. The Patriots going back-to-back in divisional games. Patriots with a disappointing loss against the Miami Dolphins, losing 17-16 to at home. The Jets, a disappointing loss against former quarterback Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers in Week 1. Guys, I like the Patriots here, and I like the Patriots by a lot. If I was going to give you a lock for this week, I think it would be the New England Patriots. Even the Patriots to win this game, I know it's a divisional matchup, and a lot of divisional matchups stay close. But give me the Patriots to win this game. Give me the Patriots to blow by a five and a half point spread. So those were your one o'clock games for Sunday uh, Sunday afternoon. Now let's move to the four four twenty five games, and we're going to start off with the Minnesota Vikings at the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals are very impressive last week. Uh, and the Vikings, unfortunately, blowing a game in overtime against the Cincinnati Bengals. This Cardinals offense, talk about two touchdowns to DeAndre Hopkins. A uh, really big game for him. He showed up a lot. Uh, another two touchdown receptions for Cameron Kirk, I believe it was as well. So DeAndre Hopkins, or I'm sorry. So um, Murray had four touchdown passes overall in that game. The Minnesota Vikings, again, Kirk Cousins, do what Kirk Cousins does. Dallin Cook with a fumble in overtime, not what you want to see. So the Falcons are going to be looking to get a little bit of payback, right, to get off the losing edge and try to get that one, get a winning rhythm, especially with the Packers looking as bad as they did in week one. But I like the Cardinals so much in week one. Give me the Cardinals to win this game. It's going to be a close one. All right, but give me the Cardinals to win this game. Give me the Vikings to cover a four-and-a-half-point spread. Then we look at Tom Brady, TB12, leading the TB Bucks. Going to to their home opener against the Atlanta. Oh no, the second game at home after a week, uh, more than a week off after they played last Thursday. Going up against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons just didn't look good at all against the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Falcons have a lot of work to do if they want to keep this game close. I don't think they're going to, and neither does Vegas. The spread is currently 12 and a half. I can't remember the last time we had two games with a 12 and a half point spread on the same week. But you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home, Tom Brady, this uh, plethora of wide receivers that they have, an extra few days off in between games. It is a divisional matchup, but the Falcons have to feel dejected after they lost as badly as they did to the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, the Buccaneers to win this game, you know, the Buccaneers to cover a 12 and a half point spread. Going on to Los Angeles and the Chargers, who came off with an impressive win against the defensive mining Washington football team. A three-point favorite as they go up against the Dallas Cowboys, who even though they lost, 
looked impressive in that loss. The Dallas Cowboys losing in Tampa Bay last Thursday in the opening game of the season. Listen, the Cowboys look so good. Dak Prescott looked really good against that Tampa Bay defense. Give me the Cowboys to pull off the upset here, the three-point underdogs on the road but we know what it's like in la for the chargers the fans really don't show up and the fans that do show up are for the away team so give me the chargers to win this game or i'm sorry give me the cowboys to win this game give me the covers cowboys to beat a three point spread moving on to the last four o'clock game 425 game of the of sunday week two it's the seattle seahawks at home after impressive win against the indianapolis colts going up against the tennessee titans so the titans now the second afc south team for the seahawks to play in two weeks the seahawks five and a half point favorites listen the titans cannot let what happened last week against the cardinals happen this week they can't get down early. If you get down early, you can't develop that running attack, and that's vital for Derrick Henry and this Titans offense. So give the Seahawks to win this game at home. I like Russell Wilson. I like how they looked in week one. Give me the Titans to keep this one close. Give me the Titans to try to steal possessions. Give me the Titans to cover a five-and-a-half point spread. Moving on to Sunday night football, and man, at the beginning of the season, before the when the, the schedule first came out, this was one of those games you were really looking forward to, right? The Kansas City Chiefs on the road going to Baltimore, potential playoff preview in many people's minds. But due to all the injuries, talking about Peters, talking about Edwards, talking about all the Dobbins, all the injuries to this Baltimore Ravens team, the really a shell of themselves. So listen, they have Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's going to do his thing. Lamar Jackson is always going to do his best to get his team out on top. And we saw that on Monday night against the Raiders. He almost did that thing single-handedly. That's not going to work against the Chiefs. This Chiefs, Chiefs team has too much offensive firepower. Give me the Chiefs to win this game and give me the Chiefs to cover a three-and-a-half point spread. Even though they're on the road, even though it's Sunday night football, the Ravens hopefully will be a little amped up for Hoping for a good game still. But give me the Chiefs to win. Give me the Chiefs to cover that three-and-a-half point spread. We move on to Monday night football. We go from one of the greater games of the week with the Chiefs-Ravens game and we move on to this game. And, guys, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I wonder uh, a lot what, why schedule makers make certain games on Monday Night Football and Sunday Night Football at the beginning of the season. Luckily, flex scheduling is going to interfere with that a little bit, hopefully this year. Uh, but you go on Monday Night Football and you have the Detroit Lions, probably going to be the worst team in football this year. I mean, they look pretty bad against the Niners until the end of the game. You have the Detroit Lions going into Green Bay, Lambeau Field. And going up against a Green Bay Packer team that got embarrassed. There's no other way to say it. This is this was Aaron Rodgers' worst worst start of his career, in my opinion. This is a game where the Packers in Week One just really got humiliated by the Saints. Now they're coming home. Will they use that uh, as fuel, as food, as fuel to the fire to uh, to beat this Lions team and really need, leave no doubt that they still are? one of the top teams in the NFC. It's going to be a little it's going to take more than a win against the Lions to prove that you're still one of the top dogs in the NFC. But give the Packers to win this game. At home, Aaron Rodgers gets it going, I think gets uh gets his mojo back a little bit. Give the Packers to win this game. Give the Packers to cover a 10 and a half points, but I had to think about it. Uh, but I like the Packers here. I think this is a, a way for the Packers to get uh, come back a little bit, come back strong. Give the Packers to win this game. Give the Packers to cover a 10 and a half point spread. So those are my picks for week two. Let's hope that my razor sharp picks turn out better than they did in week one. Let me know your picks in the comment section. Again, if you're not subscribed to Hashtag Sports, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave a comment. Guys, I look forward to talking to you all soon. Until I do. Go Bills.